What's up, everybody? This is Jose with Oakland Latinos Unidos, a.k.a. Oakland Latinos United, with a new video for you guys to enjoy. Well, I'm out here in beautiful San Pablo, California, near Richmond at St. Joseph Cemetery. I was visiting my parents' grave, having been here in a while. And I made a video here before in the past, just a beautiful sunny day. And I wanted to talk about the topic of the, the, the thing that's going on now with the coronavirus and the standstill and what can we learn from it as humans, as Chicanos, as Raza, as people of color, etc. And you know, I'm at a cemetery and like I said before, a lot of us are going to be here one day. Hopefully not anytime soon, but some of us will be here one day. And that's just part of life. And because of the coronavirus, a lot of people are probably going to end up here sooner than later. Hopefully that's, not, hopefully that's not any of us. You know what I mean? And in, to ensure that, we just have to take care of ourselves. But that being said, you know, these are scary times. They're interesting times. You know, and there's a lot of uncertainties. And this brings up the topic of death and mortality within a lot of people because we don't know what's going on. We don't know if this virus is going to kill us. We don't know if this virus is going to take out half of the world. We don't know. And things have been, you know, weird, you know. The, the whole country has shut down and people are supposed to be quarantined and people are supposed to not come out. People are supposed to stay six feet away from each other and etc. And, you know, being in quarantine and being inside all the time, you know, it does something to your brain. It makes you think a lot. And I've been thinking a lot, reflecting a lot, meditating a lot. And, you know, I've been thinking about one thing. Us as humans, you know, up to this point, we have not had something, at least not in the United States, that has put a big imbalance in our lives. You know what I mean? Things like this, like, Epidemics, pandemics, wars, death, destruction happens a lot in other countries, especially in third world countries. And a lot of people from third world countries or more undeveloped countries are used to this type of stuff. But we are not. It's something new to us and it's something that we haven't seen in many years. The last time something like this has happened, many of us weren't alive yet. And many of the people that were alive then, probably very few are alive today. And the last time we had a big pandemic that scared a lot of people like that was the Spanish flu of 1919, 101 years ago. That's a long time, you know what I mean? And I, I, I'm sure if there is someone alive from that era, there were probably very little kids and probably don't really remember it, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm pretty sure the people of that time or, you know, that incident probably humbled them a lot. It probably taught them survival and it probably broke them from other things that maybe they were thinking about before or maybe whatever was their life. If they have a comfortable life, possibly it broke them from that. And basically the coronavirus, the whole thing that's going on right now, it's breaking us from our comfort zone. It's breaking us from our everyday lives, from what we're comfortable with. And it's something that's hard for us to understand or hard for us to put together you know what I mean and it makes us scared that we're going to end up here or that the world is going to end or that there's going to be some kind of imbalance you know what I mean also the economy is going down the drain it could be possibly we're going into another recession if we're not already in one you know what I mean you know the world got greedy and I talked about it in the past and with the, with the you know, dot com and tech boom, you know, with all the money coming into the Bay Area, the gentrification, the money over people, the high rates of homelessness, the high rates of people being pushed out and priced out, the greed and just straight up price gouging going on in, in the Bay Area and in the world and in California. You know what I mean? This is a time to reflect. You know, all that greed, all that you know, just evilness of, of, of this capitalism can create all the your your 
tech boom, your comforts, your, you know, your apps, your Instagram, your Instagram model, whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever it might be has been put on hold by this. Even my life has been put on hold by this because I, besides Oakland Latinos United, I work and I'm an artist as well. And as far as an artist going, I'm not making anything from being an artist right now. That's in a standstill completely. You know what I mean? All I got is the internet and I've been working here and there, luckily. But, you know what I mean? My life has been a standstill. And there's a lot of uncertainty. I don't know where this is going. And I just hope when we come out of this, get it humbles us as humans, not as a race, as human beings, as a human race. I hope it, it makes us realize the errors of greed, the errors of selfishness, the errors of, of, of just inhumanity. I hope that this coronavirus wakes us up from that. And it shows us a little humility. And it shows us that we're still humans. We're not robots. You know what I mean? And the tech, apps, phones, and all this stuff that controls our daily lives now. You know, it's all a facade. You know what I mean? It's all just a comfort. You know, it's all just BS. And the greed and the evilness that comes with greed... And the evilness that can come from capitalism, you know what I mean, is in many ways a cause of a lot of this, you know, because a lot of people, right, a lot of people are going to die because they don't have health care. A lot of people are going to die because they don't have a lot of money and they don't eat right and they're stressed and they have high blood pressure and various things. We already know that people of color are the ones that are dying from this, especially particularly black and brown people. That statistic already came out, you know? So, you know, we have to, as a human race, become humble from this and learn from this experience. The same way after 9-11, because I survived, I was a person who lived through 9-11, even though I wasn't in New York, I remember the attitude after 9-11. Everyone was humble, everybody was cool. You know, all of a sudden you were an American, as the whole saying says, you know, and there was a lot of discrimination of Muslims and of uh, even Indian people who had nothing to do with 9-11. And that was a tragic thing, but in other ways it humbled us. But at the same time, it turned us into people that supported war without question, unfortunately. This right now, you know, there's, there's, I want to make a video about attacks on Asians going on in the country because of the coronavirus, which is not cool. You know what I mean? And that's, that's just something that is not cool to attack a, a certain race of people because of something that's going on. Yes, it started in China. But that doesn't mean it's all Chinese people's fault. That's just, that's nonsense. You know what I mean? That would be like blaming AIDS on all gays or all blacks. You know what I mean? That's, that's stupid. You know? So, all I could say, in spite of the discrimination, in spite of the greed, in spite of the gentrification, in spite of all the stuff that happened before this quarantine happened... I just hope we learn from this, and I hope as a human race, we learn to reclaim our humanity, and we, and we learn to reclaim our vulnerability, and we learn to reclaim our humbleness, because yes, we are animals, but at the same time, we have feelings. We, we, we know right from wrong. And we are just constantly against each other, whether it be greed, whether it be gangs, whether it be racism, whether it be colonialism, whether it be this, that. You know what I mean? We're just constantly at it with each other. And I just hope this brings us together as a human race. And this, is, this isn't some hippie, esoteric nonsense. This is reality. We're a human race. And our survival as a human race is important. 
because as we as we're learning now, something like a coronavirus can destroy and wipe out humanity. I mean, look at the Black Plague. Read about that plague. That killed a lot of people. A lot of people. Some might say, well, that wasn't people didn't understand. You know what I mean? Medicine back then, and that's true. They didn't. And not just that, the way we treat the Pachamama, the Mother Earth, you know, pollution, you know, destroying of, envir of the environment, of the resources, you know, polluting the water. You know, Earth is probably turning on us. Because us as humans, we treat our land, our tierra, our Pachamama, our motherland, we treat it like shit. We do. And hopefully this is another wake up call for us to realize that we have to care for our earth and for our land. And there's a security guard who's gonna tell me probably to move. I'll move. And uh, yeah, that was the security guard telling me to move. <laughs> Cause I think they're closing the cemetery. But just think about that, reflect on that. And uh, that's about it. Oakland Latinos United, late.